So um, my name's uh, Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil. Um, I also run the outside digital art and design. Um, my info, let me throw it into the chat. Um, well, all right, here we go. I'll do this. I'll throw this into the chat. That's my info if you're interested in learning more about me. But we are not here for me. We're here for you. Um, so this is getting started, Rhino for Windows. Um, what we like to do with these sessions is basically um, the, the idea is you are very new to Rhino. You just downloaded it. You're trying to figure out what all the buttons do. And we try to go through um, a realistic scenario of opening Rhino for the first time, looking at a blank screen and trying to figure out you know exactly what it is that you're trying to do here. So we try to do projects that um, uh, take about an hour, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but I try not to get too crazy with it and, and just give you a general overview of what it takes to go from clean sheet, staring at a blank page to a model uh, in about an hour. It's not intended to be a tutorial, so to speak, um, if you want to follow along um, and you're getting and you're and you're new to this, I would recommend actually that you just watch this, um, take some notes, and then the video is going to be posted on Vimeo later, and I'll make sure uh, to give you the 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 web address and stuff like that for where this stuff will get posted, and then go back and try it on your own time uh, at your own speed, where you can you know rewind and and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to just do a really simple model, and I start almost every model with an image. And to get an image in, we're just going to run the picture command. If you're using B5, um, it's picture frame, but in B6, it's picture. And I did this scrubby little sketch uh, of this little combination lock thing. And the whole idea behind this was I just want to go through like the process of how you would make a little multi-part model. Now, don't judge the sketches or call my art teacher from art school. They'd be very disappointed in me. But um, this is this is just intended. It's not necessarily intended to be a blueprint. It's intended to be a visual suggestion of what's going on here, because what I want you to do uh, with Rhino is to be able to get to the point where you're fast enough that instead of copying a drawing, which anybody can do, we can teach a chicken how to do that, right? I want you to be able to design in Rhino. I want you to be able to make choices in 3D. I want you to be able to use the tool as a design tool, as opposed to just being a, a button pushing CAD monkey. We don't want that, right? So we, we want you to be able to use it as an art tool. We want you to be able to get the results that you want, not the results that the machine gives you. And, and we wanna be able to talk about ways uh, in, in which to achieve that. So I did this little visual suggestion uh, of, of what this thing will do. I want to use it as a guide. Um, I could throw some dimensions on this, but I'm not even going to worry about that at that at this point. I can I can always do that later. Um, this is intended to kind of just get a piece out, look at it in 3D, possibly throw it through a printer, which I would double check the size on that. But um, in fact, let's do that. Let's 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 first of all make sure and and talk about what units that we're using. Um, in this case, I'm in inches because we're in the U.S. and the, we're the last country in the world that doesn't use metric, strangely, but that's how it rolls. So I'm in inches, and I want this thing to be about I don't know, maybe let's say let's say two and a half, three inches top to bottom. So I'm going to just drop a line at zero, and I'm going to type let's just call it three for for simplicity's sake, and I'm just going to make a little just a little L-shaped line here. And I'm gonna take this image, I'm gonna line it up with the bottom of this. I'm gonna use the scale command. I'm gonna to snap to the bottom of this line using an O-snap. And then I'm gonna just shift drag this thing down until it meets that line. Once I know that I have the size correctly, I can either hide this or get rid of it or do whatever I want with it, throw it on a layer. But this gives me, so I know I'm about, I'm about the right size. And I can verify this if I want to get crazy. I can come in here and I can actually put a dimension on this and say, okay, 2.98 is close enough for, 
hand grenades and concept modeling. So, um, so I'm going to call that approximately the right size. So, in order to proceed from here, I want this I want this image to be usable, but I also if I if I were to try and model over it at this point, especially if I'm if I'm down here or something like that, I can't see that line. I don't know where that line is. So I need to drop the opacity of this image a little bit. So I'm going to go to the materials tab over here. If you don't have the materials tab loaded, right click on it. This is all the tabs that you can load in here. All right. So I'm going to pick this material. You'll see in here that this picture is loaded onto a material already named correctly as uh, the file name. And I'm going to come down here to the transparency slider and I'm just going to crank this up to somewhere uh, probably about, in this case, it looks like about 60% is probably going to get me where I need to go. I can still see the image, but if I draw on top of it, I'll be able to see my line work, which is kind of what I want. And by the way, before we get too far, too much farther into this, these, these sessions are intended to be entirely uh, interactive. So please find your chat window. If you have a question about anything that you see me doing, uh, these are very informal sessions. Um, I have no problem stopping and explaining something, doing something again, um, going off on a wild tangent to explain something. Um, however you want to, however you want to do that, this is this time is here for you. So find the chat. If you have a question, please type it in there. I'm going to keep an eye on it uh, throughout the the course of this of this time, and uh, be more than happy to to answer any questions that you have. <clears throat> All right, so we've got this. We've got this knocked down in our transparency. We know we can work over it. Let's let's make it so that it's not. It's a little less obtrusive. If I go to the perspective view, you'll see that my mod the the image is right at the origin, and that's great. Except for if I were to model something and go to shaded view, you can see that my image cuts right through the center of my model. <clears throat> I can't see the image. The model is kind of a hassle. So I'm going to actually take this and slide it back in space just a little bit. If I go back to my front view, you can see that it's still lined up correctly, but it just, you know, it doesn't get in the way of the model anymore. So I'm going to just stick it back here in space. If I had a second view of this, let's say I had, let's say I had a second view over here, I would align this then in the right hand view and I would just leave it kind of tucked out there in space outside here. So I like to have a little window in the middle of the in the middle of the screen where I can model and keep all the images kind of dis distributed uh, around it as needed. And if I were so then so then what I want to do is I want to take this and put this on a layer. So I'm going to change this layer here. And I'm going to just call this the front image and I'm going to right click and say change object layer. And now this object is on this layer. I can hide it as needed. I can lock it, which makes it so that I can't pick it anymore, which is nice because I can model over it and it doesn't have it doesn't have the, the the hassle of picking it and trying to determine between my model or my or my image. If I had a second image over here, I would make a second layer and I would ins I would put this on this layer over here. And the reason that I would do that is <clears throat> I can I can turn on and off these images as necessary. So if I want to work on the front view, I, I leave this image up. If I want to work on the right view, I'd leave this image up. And if I if I want to declutter my screen, I can just hide one or the other. So I always put, like if I'm working off a typical floor view, I'd have a front, a right, a top, a bottom, a side, whatever I need, I'd have each layer for each image. And then that way you can you can turn them on or off as needed. All right. So I don't really need the right image, so I'm just going to right click on here and delete this layer. It's going to get rid of that and the image. I don't need that. And so we're set up and ready to roll because this is really the only image I have, the only image I really need. And uh, and this expertly drawn sketch here. So. <clears throat> All right. So the body of this thing, I'm assuming, is just going to be fairly rectangular. So let's just go ahead and, la and, and lay that out with kind of standard drafting tools. So I'm going to come up here and grab a polyline. I'm going to click up here. I could start at the origin if I was going to be fussy, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. So I'm just going to click here, shift drag, click over here. I'm going to shift drag down and you may say, well, why didn't I, why didn't I build this jaw again? I'm not entirely sure what these tumblers are going to do. I have them drawn proud here, but as I'm looking at it, I don't really like that. I might want them to be flush. So I'm going to build the entire thing first, and then we can always 
hack that out later. So I'm going to draw those three sides, <clears throat> and then I'm going to do a three-point curve here. And my my O snaps are enabled right now. See how it's just snapping all over the place? I don't like that, so I'm actually going to disable these, which makes them not work. And that seems counterintuitive, but the Alt key is the is the hot key toggle for that. So all I have to do down here is click down here and they with the Alt key and see how my O snap lines up. Alt, see how my O snaps line up. If I let go of Alt, then it's gone and it's it's very non-obtrusive. So I like that better. So I actually run with these disabled all the time. So we're going to do a three-point arc, put that there, and then I'm going to drag select everything and join. And that's going to give me the, the basis for this body. All right. Everybody still with me? All right. Doesn't look like I've killed anybody yet. All right, so I'm the there's a there's a chamfer on this thing, and there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can actually build this as a as a solid block, and then actually use the chamfer tool to throw that on there. But and and let's go ahead and try that. Why not? Let's let's give it a shot. So I'm going to go through here and say an ex extrude a closed planar curve. This is our curve. I'm going to extrude this both sides, and it's going to be solid. And I'm not going to delete the input because I want to keep my original curve. And I'm going to pull this out. I don't have a side view of this, so I'm going to just say, I'm going to pull it out about this far. And so let's just see what we get out of the chamfer tool, which, which lives down here, right here. And let's say, uh, and it looks like the exterior edges are not chamfered, but the interior edges are. So I'm going to leave this edge and this edge and this edge and this edge alone. I'm not going to do those. So let's do let's do these on both sides. Just see what we get. It might be a it might be a a dumpster fire, but let's just see. I'm going to turn the preview on and the uh, the the distance on this thing is is way too big. So this thing is going to be a mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set all and I'm going to change this to like 0.2. And you can see the preview updates. And in this model, it updates really quickly. And it looks like actually the quality on those is going to be OK, but it's still too big. So I'm going to set all again and say 0.08. And that is starting to look a little closer. If I did this in wireframe, I could see how it lines up with my model. And in this case, it's close. but one thing I'm noticing about my sketch that I didn't notice when I did it is this chamfer is a little bit fatter than this chamfer over here. And I may be able to pull that off, but it's it's going to give a little bit of a weird result. This I think if I just use the tool, it's going to start, it's either going to peel up or peel down, which I don't really want. So again, going back to being a designer instead of a instead of a keyboard monkey, I want to look at this and say, okay, well, how does that feel? So I'm gonna I'm gonna accept this. I may actually make this just a hair bigger because I'm fussy. So that lines up kind of here, 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 and then this one, you know, I mean, this sketch is so badly drawn, it's it's hard to tell because it's a little fat down here, but it's close down here, and then it's tight down here. So maybe. Maybe that's a feature I want. Maybe I want this dynamic chamfer, but I'm going to do it static first and just take a look at it and say, well, what does that look like? <clears throat> and if I was being lazy, I could just say, okay, done, you know, and and roll from there. But I kind of, as I'm looking at this, I kind of like this dynamic, badly drawn arc down here where it starts tight and it opens up a little bit at the top. So if I was to do that, how would I go ahead and implement that? Well. What I could do is I could I could actually come through here and use the extract tool, which is this one, right click on explode. And I could pull out this surface and this surface and this surface and this surface, right? And then I can use the invert command, or sorry, isolate command, and just hide and hide everything except those objects that are picked. All right, everybody still with me? So then let's come through here and go to wireframe. <clears throat> and then let's take a look at our sketch and say, okay, well, how do we pull this off? So if we want to pull this off, first thing that's got to happen is we have to go from here to here, right? We have to trim this surface. I'm just going to do that with a curve. And then 
down here, same thing. I have to decide like how far. I'm gonna just leave it and have it start here and have it peel over to here. So this surface, I'm gonna leave it just for reference for now, but I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the next curve of the three-point arc. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go here, and then I'm gonna pull this over like that and say, okay, I think I think that's a little bit cooler. So I'm gonna pick this, trim this face, and then I have to deal with this surface here. Now I could simply I could simply just do a four-sided surface on this and I could use this surface's edge, which I think is probably the way I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just pick this surface edge, this surface edge, and then come down here and pick that surface edge. And that gives me that gives me a surface just like that, right? I can delete this. Now, there's a lot of isoprams in here, and that's, you know, may or may not be ideal, whatever. Um, if I don't like that, <clears throat> I can back up just a little bit and say, maybe I try a loft instead, just from here to here. Maybe I use this curve, and I go to that edge. And you see how that gives me a much lighter surface? That I don't have all those isoprams. Those isoprams came because I built off of a trimmed edge. A trimmed edge, if I were to if I were to um, build off of that, you'd see a bunch of little a bunch of little edit points down here, which I don't necessarily want. But I, I kind of like this better if I'm looking at it. I say, okay, that's a little bit more interesting than just the static, you know, look like something that came out of <clears throat> SolidWorks or something like that, which we don't want. I try not to use that as an insult, but it always comes off that way. Um, no offense to SolidWorks people, but your stuff looks boring. So the next thing I want to do is I want to copy this over, right? I want this stuff, I want this face to be back here. So if I join all of this together, right? This is now a solid object again, and I can tell that it's a closed object because first of all, it tells me. And second of all, I can show my edges and I can show my naked edges and it says no naked edges, no non-manifold edges. So I know that this is, I know that this is is solid, right? If I were to send this to a printer, it would go to a printer. If I were to send this to one of my boring SolidWorks friends, it would it would go into their system as well, right? All right, so let's let's get the rest of the stuff figured out. So if I shade this and I look at the front, I've got these surfaces that I want to translate to the back. Now, one thing that you might not know is that in <clears throat> as of version five, there was a, a new feature called subobject selection. So if I pick this, this is a poly surface, right? It's got it's a it's a solid object made up of a bunch of different surfaces. If I shift control click, I can pick <coughs> excuse me any face on this. Let me mute and clear my throat for a second. Hang on, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, so I can pick on any of these faces if I shift control click. I can also pick on an edge if I shift control control click, um, or I can pick on several surfaces if I hold down shift control and then click. And the cool thing about that is I can do a couple of things. In the past, if I wanted to delete faces out of a poly surface, I would have had to come over here, right click, extract, then delete. In from version five going forward, if I just shift control, click, 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 and hit delete, those will go away. I can also shift control. This is still a poly surface, right? These are still joined, but I, you can see that I have this naked edge back here. So I want to copy these over. So shift control, click, 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 click down here, click down here, go to the top view, mirror. I'm just going to type it because it's faster. I have copy turned on, and I'm going to use an O snap on the middle. I'm going to just copy this over. And you can see that it actually pulled those surfaces off the front, copied them over, left them joined. You see that? These are joined. And so now all I have to do is pick this and join it back together. Now this is solid again. Close poly surface. Okay? So cool little gumball tricks that you can do, cool little tricks that you can do with. Um, with sub-object selection. All right, so we've got this thing copied over and we're, we're pretty happy with it. Some other things 
that you can do with Gumball that are cool if I shift control click this. Because these are all degree one surfaces, right? These are these these don't have any curvature to them. I can grab this and I can pull it and I can actually update this dynamically. So if this thing is too fat, I can make it skinnier. If it's too skinny, I can make it fatter and it'll update dynamically. Now, if this was a degree three, three, three surface, these guys through here, you'd see some, some distortion and you may have to actually do a little bit of rebuilding to get what you want. But in this case, we don't have to do that. We can just, we can just adjust it as necessary, which is kind of cool. I can adjust an individual edge. If I can pull this guy over, you can see that it'll update because this is all simple degree one geometry. All right. If that doesn't make any sense, you don't worry about it. It's not going to, not going to kill you. All right. So let's look at the rest of this part. Let's, let's decide what we're going to do with the tumblers. So let's go ahead and design one and then we'll figure out what we're going to do with the rest of them. And so I'm going to grab a polyline. I'm going to just pick one to work on. I'm going to start, start here and I'm going to just draw. I'm going to add a tiny little jamper to it and then I'm going to come up to here and because I want this to be symmetrical in two directions I'm going to take this object and I'm going to mirror it again with copy turned on and I'm going to mirror it this direction and then I'm actually going to cut this in half I got to I'm going to decide where my axis is I'm going to put my axis somewhere like this and then I'm going to trim both of these off and then I'm going to mirror it again in this direction and then i know that this thing is all is all symmetrical now this is way too big right i can see that right now so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to scale this whole thing i'm going to join it together which should kill my history and i'm just going to scale it until it matches something like that all right and that that feels better to me as far as an, an exterior shape now, because I'm going to revolve this, I actually don't even need this second half over here. So I'm just going to delete it. I used it to kind of design it to know what it was going to look like, but I don't need it anymore. <clears throat> and then I'm going to just revolve this using the revolve surface tool, which is down here. This is going to be my axis. And I'm going to just use a full circle, which is the underlined U in the command line. If you don't know this about Rhino, the, the, see where the, in the command line, if we look here, there's little spots that are underlined. See the D's underlined, the F's underlined, the U's underlined. If I just type U enter, that's the hotkey. That's the command line hotkey to get that particular command, or you can just click it. But that gives us one. And then I can take a look and say, okay, how do I, how do I feel about this? If I had to spin this thing with my thumb, how would that work out? So let's take and let's just go ahead and duplicate these so that we have, you know, the, the volume of what those things are going to look like. So I'm going to just use Gumball to do this. I'm going to use Gumball Relocate, stick Gumball up here, and then watch this. If I drag, tap Alt, I can snap it to the bottom. I could do this with a linear array. I could do this with a bunch of different things, but this is just so cheap and easy. People say lazy. I like to say efficient, but you know, I'll let you be the judge of that. It's probably lazy actually, if we're being honest, but it's been working so far. All right. So let's look at this and say, okay, that, volume kind of is a little bit thin for this. So let's take this guy and let's scale this a little bit. See how those just start to poke out. I like that relationship a little better. I like that it's kind of close, but not, it's going to be just a little proud, but not super obtrusive. So let's call that the correct relationship and see we're making design decisions in 3D. Right. If we were just copying a sketch, we would just mindlessly go through this and say, oh, make it this. Here you go. Done. We don't want that. We want to look at this and say, what does it does it look good? Does it feel good? Does it make sense? Does it do what I want it to do? Does it you know, this thing is a little bit short. So let's take this and scale it. Just a little bit. I'm just going to use Gumball to do that. 
Let's make it just, see how it just tiny, just pokes out the tiniest little bit. That's kind of what I'm going for, right? I kind of want that to just stick out the sides a little bit. <clears throat> so I need to make a space for this. And, and in the drawing, if I hide this for the time being, we can look at it and say that this is this is wide open, right? So there's no there's no intrusion of the case over the tumblers. So let's go ahead and build that. And what we can do is there's a couple of ways we can do it, but I'm gonna do it this way. And I'm gonna follow the chamfer and be all designy. If that's a word, I think it is. All right, so we've got a curve here. I'm gonna slide this forward so we can see it. And I'm gonna just take this and using gumball, this little dot here is an extruder dot. If I drag it, it makes a surface, right? So I can check and see kind of how the relationship between the opening and the tumblers is gonna, is gonna work. <clears throat> now, I have a decision to make. If I just hack this out, and let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna just hack this out. See how it was backwards? The reason for that is my normals on this open surface were facing the wrong direction. So I'm gonna flip those. Now, if I do my Boolean again, it'll take out the right spot. So now I have a decision to make. Do I like this missing wedge? This is where you say, no, you don't, because I don't, I don't like that. So I don't think that this is the best way to do this, because this would be a sharp edge when you spun it, your fingers would catch on it, and nobody wants that. So let's do it a different way. Let's go to the bottom view. Let's take a circle, snap it to the center, and make it just a little wider than the object. Then I'm gonna draw a second line through here and decide where do I want this contact point to be? And I don't want a blade here. We don't ever wanna design things that have blades that are near fingers, right? So I'm gonna put a little flat on this and I want it to be kind of something like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take and trim. Well, actually, no, I'm, not, I'm not gonna trim that. I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna draw some random box around this thing. And then I'm gonna take these two objects. I completely make this up while I go along, by the way. So the one thing about these videos is I, I don't practice these. People are like, yeah, we, it shows. Um, but uh, I, I don't practice these. And the reason that I don't practice these is I want this to be a realistic uh, representation of kind of like what you would possibly be facing if somebody walked into your desk, dropped a drawing on it and said, build this. So. Um, that's my story and I'm sticking with it. So let's trim up this and this, and I made a cutting object, right? And the cool thing about that is I can take this and just use gumball and extrude it, snap it to the top of this, and then cap it. Ooh, helps if I get all of it. Ah. I make the mistakes so you don't have to. See how this, this doesn't join here and this doesn't join here? Let's fix it. The reason it doesn't join is because the curves are not in the same plane. See that? See how this is lower and this is higher? How do we fix that? We take it like this. See how the little gumball handle sticks out? Click it, type zero, and it flattens it to that plane. Now I can join it. Now it's a closed curve. Now, I bring my model back. I'm gonna just pull it down here. It doesn't matter how low it is. Only thing that matters is how high it goes. And then I'm gonna extrude up to here. Cap this. So the, the way I knew that, that that whole thing failed is because I tried to cap it and the cap failed and I was missing a surface and stuff like that. So now I can do a Boolean, pull this out and it gives me a much tidier 
relationship between the lock and the spinning cylinders. Now, there, there's, so Ashish, you're a design engineer. I'm sure you're already looking at this going like, how are you attaching the tumblers to the thing? And how are you, is it? I went to art school, man, settle down. This is, we're, this is just concept. So assume there's some magical pin through here that holds all these together. <laughs> and in fact, if you wanna really get crazy about it, we can even do this. Um, we will, I'm, I'm sensing your withering stare. So let's, let's, throw, let's throw a pivot in here just for, just for the people in the cheap seats. So I'm gonna just stick this out just a little bit like that. All right, pivot there, you happy? Okay, so let's go ahead and draw the, let's draw the, the recess in here. That's a simple, again, a simple uh, matter of just drafting this out. And I'm gonna cheat actually. I'm gonna shift control click on the polysurface edge and watch this. If I drag, it messes up the model. If I shift control click, drag, tap alt, see the little plus that shows up there? I don't know if you could see that flashing. That little plus that shows up and let go, I get a curve. So that's how we can duplicate things using Gumball. So if I, if I wanted to pull a curve off of this, I'll do it again so you can see it happen. But if I shift control click on an edge and I start dragging, see how it's breaking the model here? But if I tap alt, it still looks like it's breaking the model, but as long as you can see that little plus down there, see that, I don't know if you can see that, and let go, it breaks off a curve. And that's, that's super useful. So I've got my curve. I don't really like the, the relationship on that. It's a little bit too parallel. So I'm gonna just turn the points on, and I'm just gonna pull the point a little bit to get a little bit different shape. Okay, so I've got a little bit of dynamic thing going on there. It makes it a little bit more interesting other than just a boring offset. Let's draw, I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit. Let me pull it a little closer in there. And we'll just trim this together. It's entirely possible these aren't on the same plane, so let's just check. And they're not, see that? See how they're offset like that? So I'm gonna just again use the gumball trick and I'm gonna go in the blue direction and just say flatten to zero. And that gives me a little flat object. All right, I can join these. I can extrude this as a planar curve and I'm just gonna snap it to the face of that. So now that I know that it's touching, see that it's touching, I can use Gumball to decide how deep it is. And I'm gonna go, since I'm going with the arrow, I'm gonna go like 0 0.05. That's too much, so let's undo it. 0 0.025. That probably is a little closer to what I was looking for. And I can take this then and go to the top view. I can mirror this. And then Boolean subtract both of those two objects, which gives me my recess. Now, here's an interesting thing. So if I shade this, you can see that I've got this chamfer going on here, but this thing is just dropped straight in. What if I decided later that I wanted to chamfer this? I mean, select my curves and hide them so they're out of the way. I can shift control click this surface, go to my front view, Shift drag on the scale handles. And I can add a little chamfer. I'm gonna not shift, but I'm gonna just do a 1D scale in this direction and check that out. Because this is all degree one geometry and it's easy to modify, it's simple, it doesn't have any curvature. I can do that stuff all day long and get the result I want. And if I like it, I can simply, I'm gonna just extract this surface pick this one, delete it, join that back in. It's faster than picking, 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 and then delete. And then I'll do the exact same thing I did before. Shift, Control, click, 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 click. Go to the top view, 
mirror, I'll stop using hotkeys, I know that's rude. I'm gonna mirror this here, and it mirrors it to the back. And again, because it was a join poly surface when I picked it, it's a join poly surface when I mirror it. I join it all together, and it looks like it didn't quite land correctly. So let's put it in the right spot using the move tool. I might have mispicked my mirror location, but no big deal. All right, close poly surface. All right, we should probably save. Religion may save your soul, but only control S will save your data. So let's do a save on this. And I'm just gonna call this lock. Rhino's been very stable in my experience, but live demos being what they are, let's try and mitigate the risk. All right, so the last thing we need to do is just build the shackle. And we can decide how crazy to get with this, whether we wanna go ahead and Boolean this and make the whole blah, 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 and all that, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm gonna make this a very simple, a very simple thing. So I'm gonna start with this curve, and I'm actually going to pull this curve using the duplicate edge tool, and I'm gonna isolate this, and I'm gonna actually extend this curve using the extend, tur extend curve tool, which lives, which lives, where do you live? It's in here somewhere. Here it is, there, extend curve. It's in here somewhere, we'll find it. Oh, where did you go? Did I pull it out of this menu? I might've pulled it out of this menu and put it in my pop-up by accident. Anyway, this is what it looks like, extend curve. I'm gonna use the natural extension on this and I'm gonna just drag this out like that, just make that curve longer. Cause I wanted that to match, right? I wanted it to, I wanted it to, you know, to, to do its thing. So, <clears throat> so because this is the exterior of the shape, I'm gonna set this to be the exterior of this shape. And then I'm gonna use the blend curve, which is this guy, adjustable blend curve. And I'm gonna blend these two together. And I'm gonna pull the endpoints. And I'm gonna set them both to tangency. And, and I'm gonna just play with my shapes until I get what I want. That's a little more dynamic than I was thinking. So let's pull that up like something like that. That should work. And I'm going to use the trim and join and let it do that. So now I've got I've got a curve, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna let it do its thing, um, getting around here. So I can I can do one of two things. I can I can just shoot a curve around this and see how that works. Let's give that a shot. I'm gonna snap a circle like that, and in order for it to work properly, I'll just gumball rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm gonna run it around like that. Let's see how that works. May or may not work, we'll see. <clears throat> People are like, you're the instructor, you're supposed to know if this works. I don't know if this works. There we go. And it works okay, except see how, it, see how it's self-intersecting up here? I don't like that. And the other thing that I noticed is that this actually is larger than this. So let's let's actually do that because I kind of like that dynamic shackle. It's probably not super realistic for a production piece, but I kind of I kind of like it. So let's take this and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to move it from this quad over to here, and then I'm going to scale it from here, and I'm just going to scale it down, something like that. Now we'll see whether this gets us home or not i will this is this is the iterative part of the program <laughs> so let's do that's our rail these are our two curves and it's it's kind of doing it's kind of doing what i want but i'm gonna i'm gonna mess around with it a little bit this global shape blending 
helps a little bit. And I actually want this to be road-like. Um, actually, no, we'll leave it freeform. I can try refitting my rail, see if that helps. And I can rebuild the surface, but it looks like I just, the, the tool is just not going to quite get me what I want. First of all, one of the main reasons is because my curve is twisted. So let's fix that. <laughs> Derp. All right. That's the main reason there. That's a problem. So let's take the gumball. Let's set it here. I'm going to just scale it to flat from zero. And then I'm going to align this using gumball to the center. That should put us in a little bit better shape. Let's try again and see what we get. That might have a little better result. And that's a better result, like it's more consistent. But see how we're getting this, this janky transition right here? There's a couple of ways to mitigate that. I could, I could put another, you know, I could put a, a, a second um, profile curve up here and a second one up here and then hope that gets better. Or I could just take what's good and keep it and get rid of what's bad, which is this transition. So I'm going to split using an ISO curve. I'm going to split using an ISO curve. It's going the wrong direction. So I'm going to hit the T key to toggle the directions. And I'm going to stick that there and there. And then I'm going to just delete it. And it seems a little counterintuitive, but I'm going to put it back in using a blend, which I will be able to control a little bit better. I'm going to change the start point over here. Make sure the arrows are going in the same direction. See how the, it's really subtle. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little gray arrow. Make sure that that arrow is going that way, that arrow is going that way, and then run it. And actually, it looks like I had that backwards, so let's try it again. Let's go from here to here, and let's do that. So we'll use the same, the same starting point. I'm going to snap this to kind of about here and here. And you'll notice that my arrows are going the wrong direction. See how it's going this way and it's going that way. If I just click on this, it'll change directions. That gives us a much better, if I go to the front view. Now, see how much nicer that is? And I can set this, it's set to curvature right now, which is a little excessive. So I'm going to set it to tangency. And then I'm going to lock that. And then I'm going to just use the slider to get the transition that I want. And that's I feel pretty good about that one. I think that's I think that's pretty close to what I was looking for. So I'm going to just accept that, join this up. I might need a little bit extra down here, so I'm just going to shift control drag that edge to select it and then I can extrude using the extruder dot and just pull that down a little bit. And then I'll just join this up. <clears throat> And then I'll cap it so that it's a solid object. I always try and work in solid objects. I try not to, I try not to have stuff that's not solid because that doesn't print. <clears throat> it's like a game show. Will it print? No, no, it won't. And this actually is just, see how that's just violating that just the tiniest little bit? I'm going to actually cheat and just scale that in just a hair. Now, that may be from a from a functional point of view. That's probably a dumb thing to do because if this is a round shackle, if I just made it oval, when it opens, I can't pivot it, right? So let's undo that and let's just scale the whole thing just a tiny bit. Actually, you know what? Let's not even do that. Let's 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 do this. Let's grab this. Let's grab all of the center section. I like the exterior shape. I don't want that to get any, any fatter, but let's do this surface, this surface, this, this one, and this one. Now, this might make a mess out of this center section. We'll have to see. And if I scale this just a tiny bit, See how that fits now? But we have to check and make sure that it didn't really 
mess up any of this. And it's not too bad. See how it did rebuild though? This is not the, this is not the same geometry that we had before, but we have to check and just make sure that it, it still will allow everything to spin. It changed it a little bit. See how the shape changed a little bit? If that's a big problem, then you could always go back and retrim this. But for this particular model, I'm not going to worry about it. But we did gain the real estate that we need here in order to pull this thing off now. So <clears throat> this poly surface now sits in here. I would assume that I would want some sort of pin or locking something or other going in that. So I'm going to isolate again. And I'm going to go into the perspective view. You'll love this. Shift, Control, Click. <clears throat> I'm going to drag and tap all. That gives me a copy of that surface. Click, Shift, Drag. That shrinks it. And then Extruder Dot. Look at all the modeling we did. And we didn't even touch a single modeling tool. So I can take this now, join this up. Nope, not join it. I need to Boolean it. And then I'm going to throw just a tiny, I'm going to throw a tiny chamfer on this just to, just to allow it to sink in there. It probably a fillet's probably better, but I'm going to just leave it like that. Go there. And then I'm going to do one last little Boolean. I'm going to remove this from that. And I don't want to delete it, so I'm going to undo it. Change the delete input to no. And then if I hide this, I've got my bits. I'm going to isolate this. <clears throat> and then just to add a little bit of interest to this, I'm going to throw a tiny little fillet on here. And I'm just drag that down, do it visually. And then same thing here. I'm going to throw a tiny little one on here. And if I was paying attention, I should have looked to see what the other fillet was, but I'm going to just eyeball it and call it a day. People are like, oh, it's that kind of designer. Yeah. Sue me. All right. So now the shackle comes up and opens, goes down and closes. We can even do something like this. Check this out. There's a there's a panel in, in six called named position. You like this. So this allows you to actually go through and, and build in a little bit of, of smarts. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this position. OK, this is going to be called closed. And then all of these objects. Actually, we'll just do this one. Just pick this object. Sorry, let's do this again. Closed. This is the object that I'm going to worry about. And uh, we're going to leave it there. Now I'm going to take this and raise it and say that's a new position open. And then I'm going to do one more. I'm going to move the gumball to the center of this, and I'm just going to rotate this. Maybe if I was doing a rendering or something, I'd want to have that. And then I'm going to call this rotated. All right, so now I can do closed, open, rotated. And you can save as many of these as you want. Now, if you mess with the model, if I take, you know, if I take this thing and I move it, it's going to break this, so you have to be you have to be careful. This is kind of like an end of model kind of thing, so it's it's a little bit easy to break this, unfortunately. But I can go through and save these positions and then do that. So if I was doing a demo or something like that, I can bring these bring these up. These get saved with the model, so if you need them at a later date, <clears throat> you save the model and open them up. They'll still be there. Okay. I can also do that. I can I can do like say. Uh, say I want a, a dynamic view of this thing. I can come up here and do the same thing with um, set view. I can name a view and I can call this dynamic one. 
And if I roll around here and I mess up the view, I can say, well, set view dynamic one, bloop, and it goes back there. And then I bring up my named position panel and I can say rotated and that goes there or open or closed. All right, so if you're doing a bunch of renderings, like saying you're stacking up a ton of renderings, you can pick all your positions and all your views. And if I bring up this, if I bring up this named views, I can have this panel open and this panel open. Let's say I have a second view, <clears throat> something like this. And we do this uh, dynamic two. So I can say, okay, dynamic one is here and it's open. Dynamic two is here and it's rotated. Or I can go back to just simply my perspective view and close it. Okay, so you can save all this stuff in the file. So if you want to set your renders up on a Friday and then come back Monday and let them run or, you know, set them up on a Friday and, and you know, have somebody else, a render farm or something like that, say just render dynamic one open, dynamic two rotated, it's all set up and ready for them to go. All right, and that all gets saved with the file. So the last thing that we need to do on this, <clears throat> we need to actually add some numbers and, and finish these tumblers. So I'm going to isolate that for the time being. And then um, <clears throat> we have to decide uh, how many numbers are going to be on this thing. And let's say, let's say it's got, uh, well, ideally it would make sense to have it be one through nine. So let's do uh, center. And I'm going to just pull a shape out. And then I'm going to make the shape of my little indentation which is going to be something like that. And I'm going to extrude this. I'm going to hold down the shift key so it extrudes in both directions. It's a nice little trick. And then I'm going to cap this. So now this is a solid object. And what I'm doing is I'm making a little cutter. And I'm going to do transform array polar with this object. It's going to go around the center here. And I want nine items total, right? I think. Let's let's preview it, make sure. <clears throat> so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spots. <clears throat> I actually might want 10 because I, I think I want a zero as well. So let's change the preview to 10. So let's check again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. So that's correct. Anybody with a math background is going, of course, it's correct. All you have to do is think about it. my dad's here watching. He's got a PhD in, uh, in mechanical engineering and he's cracking up laughing. But this is how we do it in art school. So deal with it. <laughs> All right. So let's take this and, and go ahead and subtract these. Just because I count on my fingers doesn't mean I'm stupid. Just means my fingers get a workout. All right. So, so we've got our we've got our tumbler things. We look at it. Let's see if we like that. I think that's going to work fine. And then we have to put our numbers in here. So let's go to the top view. And I'm going to just start with. <clears throat> let's see. Is there a super slick way we can do this? Let's think about it. Um, in the meantime, while while uh, that part of my brain is thinking, let's make the other parts here. So I'm going to make, um, I'm going to use a text object. I'm going to use solids. A quarter inch thickness is probably a lot. So let's do like 0.1. And then let's do one space. We'll get all of our letter, all of our, all of our numbers out. And we can change what kind of font we want and all that kind of stuff. Maybe there's a more interesting font in here. Um, like bond shrift. I don't know what that means, but. I think that's a little better. Let's use that. So I'm going to stick this in here and it gives me my numbers. And they're big, right? They're too big. That one's weird. Let's Boolean that one together. And then merge all faces. So we've got our numbers. They're way too big. So let's just scale them down. I'm going to just drag all this and scale them down. Uh, 
All righty. I'm going to just shift drag till they're about the right size. And let's let's see. Now, ideally, I want kind of one of these faces to be to be centered. So I'm going to do this. And again, there's probably a slick way to do this, but I'm going to just snap it to the midpoint. I'm going to pick this entire thing, and I'm going to rotate, snapping from here to here, and then shift. And then I know that this thing is centered right where it needs to be. So I'm going to focus on this one. I'm going to snap it to the center. There's probably a cool automated way of doing this, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it kind of ugly. So I'm going to take this and just Boolean that out. And that's my first one. Now, I'm going to do the same thing again. And again, there's probably somebody out there who's just cringing that I'm doing it this way, but it's simple and it works. So who are you to judge? I'm going to take this and snap it to the center using gumball. I'm going to stick it in here. I should have paid attention how deep it is, but again, if you don't like it, do your own demo. So there's my two. Same thing again. Start at the center. Now this one, because it's got a seam in it, I may have a Boolean issue, but let's let's see. You know, I probably could have done something fancy like, you know, float along a curve and done all that stuff, but really at the end of the day, is this all that bad? I don't think so. I get paid by the hour. Just go around the rest of the thing and do the rest of this. <clears throat> I probably don't need to do all of them because you can only see, if we're just doing a rendering, you only need to be able to see a few of these. So I may, uh, I may cut this short because you get the idea. You don't need to watch me do the same thing 10 times. Oops. Like that. And that should be enough. And then I can fake the rest in the rendering. All right. We can go around and do the whole rest of it, but I'm going to skip this for now because I think I've got enough of what I need. That'll we can pull off the rest of it. All right, so there's my there's my numbers. If I bring back the rest of the model, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of these guys. So I'm going to just take this and delete these. I'm going to set the gumball using gumball relocate to the midpoint up here, and I'm just going to copy tapping Alt, and I'm just going to snap from one, tap Alt, tap Alt, tap Alt. Keep doing that until we just get all of them back where they were supposed to be. Now, this is boring the way that they look. We don't want that. I missed on that one. Let's fix it. Now, a mechanical object, usually, it's not, it's not perfect, perfect, perfect. So I may actually, to make this more interesting, I'm going to just go and I'm going to make these spaces just the tiniest bit different. One's going to be a little thicker than the other. And then that way, if I'm doing a rendering, it's going to feel a little bit more realistic because it's not perfect. If it was perfect, perfect, your eyes are going to look at it and go, ooh, there's something, there's something that makes me uncomfortable about that. It's the whole concept of the uncanny valley. I don't know if you've heard that term before, but there's a, there's a, a concept that if you make, especially a character, if they look realistic but not realistic enough, 
it makes you uncomfortable because they're they're uh, they they are just realistic enough to make your brain say that's a human, but it's not realistic enough to say it's an accurate human, and so it actually makes you uneasy. And that's the concept of uncanny valley. And so what we want to do is we want to avoid uncanny valley, especially even in products, by adding these little teeny touches of humanity along the way. Now, if you're building a concept model, you might not want to do this because you might want it to be perfect, perfect. If you're building a uh, something for a rendering and you want the maximum amount of realism and you want it to feel like a photograph, then you'll need to do this. And um, my business partner and I, uh, we will do things like if we're building a, we had a, a job where we built a ton of squirt guns and they had to, they had to um, be printed. And the whole concept was that they were supposed to be these like, you know, we can't do real guns. Um, so we were doing the, like these fantasy guns and, but we still wanted them to feel like, uh, like realistic, right? And so we actually, they had little, little bolt heads and stuff on them. And we actually went through and turned all the bolt heads so the bolt heads didn't match. And so, and there was Phillips screws and stuff and we made the Phillips heads not line up. And so if there were a row of three Phillips heads in a row, there would be, you know, you would see that they weren't all 90 degrees to each other so that it, it actually felt like somebody had tightened them um, and, and, and not, you know, not spent the time. It's like, obviously my wife didn't assemble it because the screw heads don't line up correctly, but um, she's one of those people that makes them all line up perfectly, but most people don't do that. <clears throat> so I'm going to turn this like that. And so the, from this point of view, you can say, okay, well, that looks like, you know, a scrambled tumbler. And ideally, you know, we would have put the rest of the numbers on there and really got some variation in there, but you get the idea. So what we can do now is save and then start to clean up. I'm going to hide my curves. I'm going to hide my image. And then I have to decide, was it about 10 o'clock? What I, what I want to do with it from here. And the, one of the great things about Rhino 6 is um, it has this new mode called ray trace mode. And ray trace mode allows you to get really convincing renders right in the right in the modeling view, but it's a little bit slow if you don't have really fast hardware. So let's start in rendered view, which is this, and I need to change my render engine. There we go. And I'm going to go to my background color. I'm going to make white and Let's see, I'm going to reset my, my model window here, reset to defaults. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. And so um, the default on this is, is called, it's just a, a, a white ambient occluded image that has a nice little soft shadow, which works really well for product shots. And I may want to rotate some of these just so they can't see the blank one that we cheated on. Oops. There we go. That gives us a little, a little nicer view of that. So it looks like those are accurate. Now, each one of these objects is a polysurface. And we already talked about sub-object selection of a polysurface in the past, right? So let's, let's go through and really quickly just assign some materials to this thing and see what we can get to get to happen. So it's 1007, time me. So let's go, uh, let's go metal. Um, we're going to just assign this to the tumbler that adds our chrome. I want this to be kind of a, maybe a black material. So I'm going to use a paint and I'm going to make this dark, but not actually black, black because black, black tends to render your kind of, it's a little soul sucking in a rendering. It doesn't, it's like you don't get any variation of the surface. Let's add a little matteness to this because I want it to have a little bit different finish than the, than the shackle. I can do that with this glossiness slider. So it makes it a little less reflective. And then let's, let's do our tumblers. Um, should we do those chrome as well? Sure, why not? Let's, let's make it easy on ourselves. Like that. And then let's make those chrome. So I'm just going to right click and assign. 
but I want my I want my letters to look like they've been painted. So I'm going to shift control click, 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 and then I'm going to right click and assign. And I can I can actually sub object assign a material on a poly surface. See, I didn't have to pull it apart. In the past, I used to have to pull it apart, and those would have to be separate objects. But now I can just shift control click, click, click. And I can assign these on individual surfaces without taking them out of the poly surface, which is super convenient. Now, the problem is if I do anything to this object, if I trim it, if I if I boolean it, if I do any modeling operations to it at all, um, I lose this. So this is kind of an end of model uh, game here. So once you're done and you're not going to do any more modeling, that's when you can do this. But see how cool this is? You can just go through here and just texture this thing up. It, it used to be uh, like version five before this came out. Um, if I had to, if I wanted to render a model and I wanted to print a model, I'd have to have two different models because all of these numbers would have to be individual um, uh, individual surfaces, which would make this not a closed poly surface anymore. And, and so I would lose the ability to be able to send this thing to a printer because these would all have to be open. Now it's the same model. I can texture it, render it out, and I can just use the same model and I can export this as an STL and it'll, and it'll run. So I can always bring back my, uh, my named, named positions. Let's say if we open and rotate it, we can do that. And then let's roll around and get kind of a more interesting view of this thing. Let's go into our camera panel. I'm going to change this from 50 degrees lens length to 35, which gives us a little bit more dynamic perspective on this thing. See that? If I go to 10, it gets really, woo, like that. That's too crazy. 35 is about right for this. I'm going to set this up and position it. And because we set this up in rendered mode, I know pretty much what I'm looking at. I'm going to make sure my, my environment's just set to a studio background, so that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and use that. The Chrome looks nice, and all this stuff seems to be working. I'm going to then just flip over to ray trace mode, which is a little bit slower. You can still work in this mode, and on my machine, it's actually fairly fast. You can see the counter down here because I've got a video card that's got like 3,800 CUDA cores in it, so it's running parallel on 3800 processors on my video card, but um, uh, your machine, depending on what kind of hardware you have, may run a little bit slower. And so uh, what I'm going to do is just let this res up, and you can see that it's already developed into a fairly decent rendering, <clears throat> but, and we're at 350, 60, 70 samples right now. I'm going to let this run to 1,000. If I don't like my view, I can always rotate it and say, well, I don't like that view, but I like this view better. And then what it does is it just resets and it starts counting again. And you'll see that the shadow cleans up. That's really the main thing that you'll see um, as it reses up the sample. But we can go ahead and let that render and then very quickly run through if we wanted to use our named views, I can even come through here and set my view dynamic one and it puts it in that view or i can come down here and set my view dynamic two and it sets that view or i can pick whatever i want <clears throat> i don't really like either one of those views anymore so i can set it here and then it's just going to start rendering over again okay let it run when it's finished i have it set to run to a thousand samples it's probably a little overkill but it if this machine's fast enough, it'll only take a minute or two to do that. And then when you want to go, uh, when you're done, you just simply come up here and either capture the viewport to a file or capture a viewport to the clipboard. And that's your that's your final image. <clears throat> All right. So 1015, it's not bad. It went a little bit over. Any questions on anything so far? Everybody stayed here the whole time. That's nice. Usually people run out the door about halfway through. Anything that you saw that you didn't understand or you want me to repeat or questions, comments, anything like that? Nothing? Is this thing on? Hello? All right. 
I'll assume that I did such a fantastic job that everybody's questions are answered until given further information. <laughs> All right, so this is about 750 samples right now. We are at a minute nine. Um, we're at 800 now, like I said, it's gonna roll pretty quickly and go from there. So once that's finished, we can just save it out. And then we've got a model that we can print. We've got a model that we can render. Um, we can throw this through a, a form labs printer or something like that. I have a form labs printer. They don't pay me. I just like them. And, uh, and then um, use it, you know, see how it feels in your hand and stuff like that. Okay. Um, if there's no other questions, I think I'm going to call it 1015 is pretty close to an hour. So I think you put up listening to my voice for long enough. And, uh, if there's no other questions, I'll let you go. We do these about once a month. Um, keep an eye on the forum and keep an eye on the learn page. Oh, I also told you, I was going to tell you where the, where the Vimeo videos were going to go. So, um, Rhino tutorials on Vimeo. It's right here. Vimeo.com slash Rhino. This is where all this stuff is going to get posted. So if you want to go through this on your own. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't. I rolled down. There's a whole lot of questions I missed. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. Architect. If you have time, please extend degrees what class A surfaces are at the end. Muhammad, that is a that is a class unto itself. Um, there are a ton of uh, resources on the web for understanding the difference between degree surfaces and things like that. Um, basically, the, the quickest way I can explain that is um, a straight line has two points. Two, uh, the, the number of points minus, uh, let's see, what is it? The, the number of points minus one is the degree of the curve, as long as it's a single span curve. So if I have a degree three curve, this is actually, yeah, it's a degree three curve. It's got three points. Actually, that's not correct. You'd have to have four points. All right, so basically the difference of a, a, a degree one surface only has two points, so it's always going to be a straight line. When you start getting into the de de degree two, three, four, five, six, that's when you start introducing curvature into uh, into the into the surface. That's the simplest way I can explain it. Um, otherwise, we'd have to we'd be here for another hour. So, um, in the in the level two class that we take, there's a there's a uh, a long chapter some say long boring chapter, but there's a long chapter on this and you can go through this manual for free if you want. If you go to rhino3d.com, learn the level one and level two manuals are here, they are free. So you can go through that. There's a whole chapter about, about degree and, and stuff like that. Um, class A, um, again, that's kind of a, a moving target depending on who you speak to, but essentially it is, it's curvature between surfaces and it's the minimum number of points given the degree. So if it's a degree seven surface um, uh, or a degree five surface uh, that, that you would need in order to get tangency, it's got six control points, degree seven's got eight control points and stuff like that, all right? Um, like I said, that's, that's, a, that's a, a discussion for a much, much longer time. Um, do anything hard in the next webinar. Um, like what? You have a suggestion? As far as uh, I'm gonna slaughter your name, and I really apologize. Uh, Parur, 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 how do I do? Is that anywhere close? Um, Muhammad says, do something complex next time. Intermediate level. We have enough beginner level on your Vimeo page. Okay. Um, what? You have any suggestions? Anything that you want to see? Because I'm always looking for stuff to model. Paul, thank you. Okay, it's, you're being kind. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, you want to see some automotive stuff? All right. That, um, yeah, you know, I might have to do like a one, two, three, four part one in order to, uh, in order to, um, 
get something meaningful out of automotive. I do a lot of kind of automotive componentry, but um, as far as building a car, um, I, that would be a tough get in an hour, but we could possibly do a series. That would be cool. Um, I'm going to start doing some sub D stuff because V7 has some sub D stuff. If you own V6, by the way, um, you can go to the download page and you can get the Serengeti build, which is version seven. Version seven is beta. It's free. If you own six, um, you can get seven for free and try it. And there is sub D modeling in seven. So we might start doing a few of those, which are a little bit more complex. All right. Well, I think that's it. I think I've tortured you enough today. So um, thank you very much for joining. Like I said, the video will be posted on Vimeo and uh, I will definitely take your, um, um, your uh, suggestions as far as next stuff. Muhammad said he saw my infinite skills video. That's cool. Um, toy car, do something realistic in a series. Okay. All right. I'll, um, let me talk to Mary about how to pull that off. Cause we usually do these are kind of onesie twosies, but um, we could possibly do a series. That would be cool. So I'll talk about, I'll talk to Mary and see how we can put something like that together. All right. Anything else I can answer for you? If not, I'll let you roll. Thank you very much for, for coming and watching. And we will catch up with you next time. I'm Kyle Houchins, and this is Getting Started Rhino for Windows. Thanks.